In this section, we're going to look at how we can transform the graph of y equals x squared and make it look like another parabola and uh, uh, get a form that we call vertex form that's very useful. So let's check this out. So let's go on over to our Desmos for a second here. And we're going to start by graphing y equals x squared. So here's the graph of y equals x squared. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change this. So we're going to say, what if we took and we put in the parentheses like x minus 1 squared. So what's going on here is we're subtracting 1 and then squaring. So we change the equation a little bit. Now let's watch what happens here. Okay, so we subtracted 1. See what that blue one is there? Okay, now let's take and let's go y equals x minus 2 squared. Uh, whoops, let me put the 2 in there. All right, so that's the green one. And then let's take and let's go y equals x minus 3 in parentheses, put that in parentheses, squared. Okay, now, you notice what's happening. You can see kind of with the different colors here. X minus 1 is this light blue one. X minus 2 is the green one. X minus 3 is the purple one. So the original one is this red one here. And uh, what's happening? Well, notice it's moving to the right. So as we subtract, before we square, it moves to the right. So as, well, what's going to happen here as we add? All right, so I've turned them off. Here's our y equals x squared. Okay, and so we want to figure out what's going to happen if we add. So let's go ahead and turn this on. There's x plus 1 squared. There's x plus 2 squared in green. And there's x plus 3 squared. All right, so what's happening? Well, notice that as we add on the inside, it's the same shape, but it's just moved to the left. So we got the same shape as the original one, it's just moved to the left, all right? So we should be familiar with y equals x squared. We got some familiar points like 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, okay? So notice that this has the same shape. Okay, so what happens? We notice this, that when we have the graph of uh, x minus h squared, it's going to move left or right. Now, it doesn't matter what the a value is. Okay, so that a value in front, that we saw that that changes the shape. Okay, and I'll just remind us of that. So that a value, watch what happens here. Okay, so this black graph here is ax squared. So this is like, this would be the graph of 4x squared. Okay, 4.1x squared. And this would be the graph of, if I can change it, negative 7 squared, 7x squared. So this is y equals negative 7x squared. If a is negative 7. Okay, so we saw that back with our standard form. Okay, and then if we have something like something less than one, like a half or point. Let me see if I can get it in between there. Oh, it won't stay. There we go. Oh, come on. There we go, point 0.3. So we have, this is y equals point 0.3x squared. Okay, the red one again is x squared. This is point 0.3x squared. All right, so it's a little wider. All right, so that a value in front is going to determine the shape but when we add or subtract on the inside, it's going to move left or right. So if we subtract 3, it moves right. If we add 3, we have y equals x squared here. It's going to move left. If we have y equals 2x squared, that's this little black one. Then y equals 2 times x minus 4x squared. This will move right. Okay. If we have negative 1 half x squared, that's going to flip it upside down and make it wider. We saw that in our last lesson. If we put the plus 4 in there, it's going to make it move left. 
We'll put a minus 5. Well, first of all, negative 3x squared. That's upside down and skinnier. And negative 3 times x minus 5 squared is moved to the right. And you can try these out and see them for yourself too. But here's the big idea. The big idea is this. If we have an equation in this form, a times x plus h. So if h is greater than 0, that means we have like y equals um, x plus 3 squared. Now, notice this. Plus move to the left. This plus 4 moved to the left. Every time it was minus, it moved to the right. Minus 4 moved to the right. Minus 5 moved to the right. All right, so plus 3 is going to move left. It seems like it should move to the right, but it moves to the left. If we have y equals x minus 3 squared, that's going to move to the right. Okay, so here's how we're going to use this. And how we're going to use this is we're going to compare a graph, an equation, to y equals x squared. So we know y equals x squared. Let me graph y equals x squared here. So y equals x squared, we think about a little xy table for y equals x squared, all right? Uh, you shouldn't have to draw this after your, some experience, but we know 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, so on and so forth. Well, those points look like this. 0, 0, that's the vertex. Right 1, up 1. Then we go right 2, up 4. Okay. Notice how those all relate to the vertex. Then if we have negative 1 squared is 1, negative 2 squared is 4. So from the vertex, if we go left 1, we're going to go up 1. If we go left 2, we're going to go up 4. Two squared, negative 2 squared is 4. So that, I'm just going to do kind of a dotted line here. That is y equals x squared. Now that's not the graph we're looking for, but when we're trying to find the equation or the graph of y equals x plus 3 squared, then we know that it's going to be similar to that. It's just going to be moved. So the question is, first we need to describe how it's different. We call this a transformation. How is it moved? How is y equals x squared moved? Well, plus 3, h is greater than 0, moves left. So we know that it's going to move left 3. That means the vertex is not at 0, 0 anymore. It's at negative 3, 0. So let's graph that. The vertex is here at negative 3, 0. Right there. So it's moved left 3. Now that means everything's going to move left 3. So if we want to get the other points here, everything's going to move left 3. So you can either graph it and move everything left, or think about this. If this was the vertex of y equals x squared, then we, we think if we're going to go right 1, we go up 1. So there's another point right there. We go right 2, we're going to go up 4. There's a point there. If we go left 1, we go up 1. We go left 2, we go up 4. All right. And so there in blue is a sketch of our graph y equals x plus 3 squared. So we can find the vertex, and we know that the a value is 1. Since the a value is 1 there, it's going to look like y equals 1x squared. It's just moved to the left 3. So that's how we can use this fact. So we, we decide where has it moved. We look at the a value, and we decide that it has the same shape as y equals 1x squared, so we can graph it from that new vertex. All right, let's go a little further now. Let's, let's see what happens when we add outside the uh, square or after squaring, all right? So, and we're headed to a, a more complete 
vertex form, or more complete equation. So let's consider this. The value of the function f of x for a certain x is just the height of the graph, all right? So when we say, you know, f of x or f of, well, if f of x equals 3, ah, sorry, x squared, then if what f of 3 just means what is the height, what is the y value when x is 3? So we've got 3 squared, and that's 9. So this just tells us that, that what the height is. So the height is x squared. So watch what happens when we add 2 or subtract 2 from it. Let's pull out our, our Desmos and look at this here. So here's y equals x squared. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add after the square. So watch what happens here. If that's a graph of y equals x squared, there's a graph of y equals x squared plus 1. And there's the graph of y equals x squared plus 2. And there's a graph of y equals x squared plus 3. How has it changed? How is it moving? Notice it's moving up. So it's the same shape. It's just moving up. Uh, so it's going up as far as this number is. So we've got plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. So it's the same shape as y equals x squared, but it's moving up. Well, what happens when we subtract? Can you guess? All right, let's try when it's subtracting. There's minus 1, x squared minus 1, x squared minus 2, x squared minus 3. How is it moving? It's moving down. So... Well, it's the same shape as y equals x squared, but it's moving down. So that remember, that's we just said that that's the height. Well, since that's the height, if we add one to the height, it's going to move up. If we subtract one, the height is going to move down. So what would happen to the graph of the function of f of x if we add 2 to it? In other words, if we take x squared plus 2? Well, if we add 2, that's going to make the height higher. It's going to go up 2. And same thing if we go subtract. So adding or subtracting the whole thing moves it up or down. So if we add a positive k value to this, then the graph moves up. So that's like f of x or y equals x squared plus 2. If we add a negative, in other words, we subtract, it's going to move down. So that's like y equals x squared minus 2. All right, and so that changes the maximum or the minimum. So that's going to take everything up. It's going to, it's going to change the whole graph, but it's also going to affect the greatest value and the, and the lowest value, all right? So um, if we move up to, well, because we know this parabola goes like this. This parabola uh, is opening up. Then, whoops up to it's gonna look like this and so the minimum is now 2 if we move the whole thing if we do x squared minus 2 well that graphs gonna be down here the whole thing is moved down to so the minimum is at negative 2 all right so we can find the maximum and the minimum as well so this here we have x squared plus 5 we moved everything up 5 so that means we have a minimum. Yeah, it's a minimum because it's facing up at x equals, I'm sorry, at y. The y value is 5. Okay. What's going to happen here? Well, if we take this negative 3x squared and we subtract 4 from it, that's going to move the whole thing down. Okay. Now, this negative 3x squared, it's, it's upside down. Negative makes it upside down when we multiply, and the minus has moved it down. So uh, this graph is going to be something down like this. And so that, that lowest value, it's going to be a maximum, actually. That's the highest value because it's upside down. Since it's upside down, this one has a maximum, and the maximum is at y equals negative 4. All right, we can, we can keep going here 
Okay, this equation is opening up because it's positive, and this plus seven means the whole thing is moved up. So I should call this open up, and this moves it up. Okay, so this is a parabola that opens up, so it has a minimum, and it opens up, so it has, uh, I'm sorry, it's moved up, so it has a minimum at y equals seven. So we start to picture what the shape of the graph looks like, how the fact the function is behaving, and uh, then we can uh, find out some more things about it. All right, so this brings us to what we call vertex form. Vertex form kind of puts it all together. And so when we take all these things, uh, we can we have vertex form. So by observing these transformations, transformations just means how it moves or how it changes. Up, down, left, right, is it getting skinnier, wider? It's the transformations of the quadratic equation y equals x squared. So we've learned to move the parabola horizontally and vertically. We can flip it vertically and we can modify its rate of change or we can, we can make it stretch. So these transformations uh, all show up in this general form. This is a number, changes the, uh, whether it opens up or down, it flips it, and it gets, changes its vertical stretch. This H number is going to move left or right, and the K number is going to move up or down. All right, so here's a good summary for you. So A, H, and K can be any numbers. Again, A affects the vertical stretch. If it's bigger than 1, it's going to be really skinny. It's going to stretch it up. If it's, if it's like a half or a third, it's going to be a little wider. Or if it's, uh, and also determine if, it's, if it opens up. If it opens up, that means we've got a positive A value. If it opens down, we've got a negative A value. And that tells us if it has a maximum or minimum. The H number shifts it horizontally, left and right. So H is our left and right number. So minus 3 moves right, and a, um, oh, this should be x. x minus 3, and x plus 3 moves it to the left. All right? So that number that we add or subtract is the, uh, moves it left and right. And so remember, it's backwards. Okay, it's opposite. So this moves right, this moves left. Adding moves left. It's, it's kind of backwards from what we'd expect. And that gives us an axis of symmetry is going to be right where that number is. Okay, now notice there's a minus in the formula. So H is the number we put into the minus formula. And then K goes vertically up and down, and that makes our minimum and our maximum. Okay? And the vertex in the end, since H goes left and right and K goes up and down, the vertex ends up at HK. So we call this vertex form because it shows us the vertex just by looking at it. All right, well, let's try some of that out and see how we can use that. So if we want to build an equation, let's say we've got a parabola that looks like y equals x squared, but it's moved left 5 and down 14. So there we have the equation, so it's going to be y equals. Now notice the a value is 1, so it's that shape. It's moved left 5, so that would mean subtracting 5 in the parentheses. And it's moved down 14, so that means we're going to subtract 14 outside. So there's the graph. So it's moved left, and it's down 14. Okay? So that means it's something like this. Moves left 5, down 14. It's going to be a little graph down here. So if you graph it, we kind of know where to find it where we could zoom around and find it. How about this? Let's flip it around. We've got this equation here. We want to describe how this is different than the graph of y equals x squared. Well, let's look at it. What does that negative do in front? That's the a value. So that negative flips it or reflects across the x-axis. All right? So reflection, reflection means flip across the x-axis, also known as a flip. 
okay? And then that uh, minus 18, that's the left and right. So that's going to move it right because left and right are backwards. So it's going to go right 18. And then this number outside, the number that happens after squaring it, that's going to move it up 9. So it's going to be flipped. It's going to be uh, right 18 and up 9. All right, so right 18, up 9, somewhere like over here. And it's going to be flipped. And so it's going to look something like that. All right, so we know where the parabola is, and we get a general idea of the shape. Okay, so last one for this video here is, well, let's, um, let's see how we can use this to get a graph, okay? So let's put it all together, and let's make a graph from the equation. So here we want to find the vertex, we want to find the axis symmetry, the maximum, the minimum, the domain and range, and we want to graph it. So we're going to kind of do the whole thing, all right? So... The equation y equals, or f of x equals, 1 half times x minus 2 squared minus 4. Well, the vertex is at 2, negative 4. Because remember, our vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So the minus is part of the formula, and, and, and h is that number there. Or you can think of it as is backwards. Minus 2 goes to the right. So the axis of symmetry is at x equals 2. That's the line that goes through the vertex. Let's go ahead and graph that. So at x equals 2, here's our axis of symmetry. And we know at 2, negative 4 is the vertex right there. So we've got a minimum value. Uh, it's opening up. And so we have a maximum, nope, sorry. Since open it up, we have a minimum at uh, a y value of negative four. Because we know this thing's going, it's gonna go up like that. I need a better graph than I just did, but that, that's gonna go like that. Y equals negative four. All right, let's go ahead and graph it, then we'll come back and talk about domain and range. So we know that that the this is one half, the a value is one half. All right, so we've got to think about this fact. We've got to think about the fact that y equals one half x squared is gonna go up a little slower. Okay, one half x squared, uh, let's do that maybe here in green. So y equals one half x squared would have zero, zero. And then normally, so 0, 0, normally 1 squared is 1, but we're going to do times a half. So when you put 1 into here, you get 1 squared times a half. That's a half. Normally when we do 2, 2 squared is 4, so 2 squared is 4, but we're going to go half as high. Half of 4 is 2. Normally 3 squared is 9, but we're going to half that, and we get 4 and a half. Okay, so that's the X and Y's we're thinking about there. So normally we go right one, up one, but we're only going to go up a half. Normally we go right two, up four, but we're only going up half as far, and so that is going up to two. Okay, normally we go right three, up nine, but we're only going to go right three, up half as far, one, two, three, four and a half. All right, so you can think about like with y equals x squared, um, and then I'm just going to copy these other ones. That's so that would be y equals one half x squared. All right, so to graph this one that we had here, we're going to do the same idea. Where to go? Here it is. We had one half times x minus two squared times um, uh, minus four. So we know it's going to be like this green one, but it's just going to start here. So I'm going to do that same kind of shape, that same kind of movement, but from this point. Okay, so uh, let's try that. So from this vertex, I think, all right, for y equals x squared, I go one, right one up one. But we're only going to go half as high. So half, we're going to go right one up a half. 
Normally from the vertex we go 2 squared is 4 up here. But we're going to go up half as much. 2 squared is not, we're not going to go up 4, we're only going to go up 2. Right. Normally we'd go from the vertex right 3 up 9, but we're going to go up half of that, 4 and a half. Okay, all starting from the vertex. And then we can copy those points over across the axis symmetry, and there they are. And so that's the graph of y equals 1 half x minus 2 squared plus, nope, sorry, minus 4. All right, so that's the idea. And so our domain, our domain is always going to be all real numbers from negative infinity to infinity. That's all real numbers. The range, this has a minimum down at negative 4, so it starts at negative 4. So the y value, remember range is y values. So negative 4 to up to infinity because it goes up forever. So let's look at one more here, and we'll call it good. So we have negative 2. What does that tell us? It's going to be upside down. x plus 1 squared. Well, this is left and right. It's going to go left 1 and plus 2. That's going to be up 2. Again, let me write it here. Our vertex form, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So, our vertex is at negative 1, because it moved left 1, and positive 2, because it's going up 2. The axis symmetry goes through the vertex. It's x equals negative 1. Since this is upside down, because of the negative 2 there, it's going to have a maximum at x. Uh, at y equals 2. All right, so let's let's start graphing that. We know that at negative 1 is going to be the axis symmetry here. We know that the vertex is at negative 1, 2, right there. All right, and... Um, Look at its look at its a value here. Its a value is negative two. So negative two tells us it's going to be upside down, and it's going to be twice as steep. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to our vertex here, and we're going to ask ourselves this. We're going to say normally if we were going down, if it, if we were we were doing like uh, y equals negative x squared. Normally, we'd have 0, 0, one, one, uh, right 1, down 1, right 2, 2 squared is 4, right? That would be plain old y equals negative 2x squared. So we'll call that like normally. Now, since we did, since we have y equals negative 2, we're thinking, of, we're thinking about this shape. Negative 2 is the shape number. 0, 0. And it was always going to be, it would, will be our vertex of this. But instead of going right 1 and down 2, we're going to go down twice as far for this one. Okay. Normally, we're going to go right 2, down 4. But we're going to go down twice as far for 2x squared. That would be down 8. All right. Something like 2, 4, 5, 6. All right. So if we were graphing y equals negative two x squared, that would be those points uh, would be the points we come up with. All right. So negative two is going to make it go down faster. So let's do the same idea here using the vertex that we have here. So here's what we think. We think that all right. We, we're going to play this game. This normally when we say normally, I'm going to think about this graph. Well, normally I'm going to think about y equals just uh, negative 1x squared. All right. So if we had just, you know, a negative 1x squared, we would go 
right one down one, because one squared is one. But here's our equation. We got negative two times all of this. So negative two is our shape number, all right? So normally we go right one down one, but we're gonna go down twice as far, all right? So we're gonna go down here. So zero, or uh, negative one, two is our vertex, gonna go down twice as far. Normally from the vertex, we go right two, two squared is four. But we're gonna go down twice as far. So we're gonna go down from the vertex, two squared is, uh, we're gonna go down eight to right here, okay? And then, so once we've got those, we could just copy it over the axis symmetry. And we got our graph. There it is. So the two stretched it, the negative two, the negative here flipped it. The positive one made it move left, the positive two made it move up. All right, and so we think about how it compares to good old y equals x squared and, and when we stretch it. So we ended up with a domain. A domain is always negative infinity to infinity. Any x values work. And the range goes from negative infinity all the way up to 2. And 2 is included, so it's a hard bracket there. All right, that's the idea. So with some practice, uh, um, you get it down and... Uh, just think about how does it compare to y equals x squared. Is it flipped? Is it stretched? Is it left? Is it right? That's what the h and the k numbers there do. All right. And uh, um, you'll get it down.